Hey guys, today I'm back in Kerbal Space Program and I want to try getting to Eve using only spider engines, which are insanely small. Now I suggested this idea a few weeks ago and I thought it was ridiculous enough to try, so let's get right into it. So I'm just starting out in the sandbox here and you can see the first thing I'm doing is putting down a crew capsule, put a parachute on that, and on that I put down one of these large fuel tanks. Now I ended up putting down a bunch of these ant engines at first and I was just curious to see how they would do. Now they're technically larger than the spider engines, but they actually produce less thrust, so I was interested to see how they would stack up. Now you can see here I just put down a large ring them on the bottom of this tank because I figured I'd probably need a lot of them to get anything done. And you can see now on launch pad, give it a shot and it doesn't get off the ground. So I ended up going back into the vehicle assembly building and just stacking a whole bunch more of these. I more than doubled the amount I had here and I thought for sure this would get off the ground. But when I went down to the launch pad here, you can see it still isn't even close to getting off the ground. So I was panicking a little bit and you can see here I just put down a whole bunch and it's getting kind of ridiculous at this point. But when I go down to the launch pad, finally here it gets off the ground, but it's not even that fast. You can see it's kind of just barely getting off the launch pad. So I wanted to switch over to the spider engines just to see how they would do. And the first thing I did just get rid of all these ant engines I had. You can see I was trying out some different designs here. After I had all those removed, I just put in a nice ring of the spider engines like this. And because I was a little unsure of how well they would do, I ended up putting down a second ring as well. And that Done. Wanted to test it out here. And you can see it actually was pretty good. It was getting off the launch pad pretty quickly, and it was way better than those ant engines. Now I was curious to see just how far I could make this one stage go. So I just let it go for a while and eventually started to turn it. Wasn't really that efficient of a turn, but it sort of worked out here. And you can see I finally ran out of fuel and ended up getting a pretty decent trajectory here. So with that looking good, the next thing I wanted to do is add on a really large stage to the bottom of this to get it up in the air. And you can see here, I really kind of went crazy with this. I have a really large fuel tank, a ton of adapters to make this work. I put down a really large ring of engines on the bottom. After I had that, you can see I'm putting down another ring of engines on top of that. And this has to be like a hundreds engines at this point. So I figured for sure it would have to work out. But I was actually checking the thrust to weight ratio here, and it's still less than one, which means there's no way it's even gonna get off the ground at all. So it's gonna add on a third ring, but I accidentally copied the main assembly, and there's just so many engines. You see here at 32 times speed, it just completely brings my computer to a halt. It ended up crashing and it used 16 gigs of RAM. So I ended up coming back and the game and very carefully copying this third ring here, but I wasn't really too sure of how it would work because the lag was probably going to be insane. But with that last ring put in place, the lag was immense in the launch pad and it still wasn't even getting off it at all. So I ended up deciding just to delete that and try something else instead. And what I wanted to try doing was using a really large amount of these stages that I made before because they're small enough they shouldn't get too laggy. And if I just keep stacking them, I could just keep dropping them off as I get farther into orbit. And after I had all those put in place, I was going to try staging them properly but it was kind of a disaster, so I ended up deciding to delete three of the bottom stages for now and just run with three stages. Once I had that, you see this bottom stage I'm beefing up a little bit because I figured since it has a little bit more weight, it's going to need some more engines. And I was trying to get the thrust to weight ratio to right about 1.5. That way it gets off the ground reasonably quickly and it doesn't just stay there. But you see here, with all that done on the launch pad, giving it a shot, it actually gets off the ground reasonably well here and I figured this had a real shot. Now continuing into the flight, everything seemed good right up until I tried to detach this stage. It worked. It just just took forever. You see here it eventually dropped off though and after that I just kept going. Now I noticed the rocket was starting to nose down a little bit and after I launched off that second stage it was definitely not doing very well at all. Now the problem with this design you can see here I had that on some more stages and eventually it just got so laggy it basically became unusable. So I ended up deciding to scrap this and I knew whatever I did next I had to be very careful with weight so I could use as few engines as possible to keep down the lag. Now you see here I even got rid of the crew capsule and I'm actually putting in one of the these probes instead, and on that I'm putting down a seat. Now you can't use the seat as the main control point, so instead I'm using the probe, but using these two is a lot lighter than using a pod, so it actually saves me a lot in the end. And you can see here I put one of these small ball fuel tanks in the bottom, and launching actually ended up being pretty good. Now this actually makes sense because the spider engines are about the right size for this, so I should be able to get pretty efficient with this design. Now I ended up stacking two more of these fuel tanks at the bottom, just give me a little bit more delta V. After that you see I put down a heat shield, and this is that once I get to Eve, I'll be able to use this to aero break and save me a lot of fuel. Now once I did that, I put down a parachute on that as well. And finally here, I'm using a structural piece to give me an attachment point to put down a fairing on. Now you see I'm putting in that fairing here and at first it was a little angular and I didn't really love the look of this, but the whole idea is that it covers the entire thing and makes it somewhat more aerodynamic as I go up into the atmosphere. So once I had that put in place, I wanted to do the other stages. And you see here, I'm putting down a fuel tank like this and I actually decided to go for the smallest one possible. And the reason for this is I want to have a lot of stages and just keep dropping them as I burn them up. And this should 
should be as efficient as possible because it means I'm carrying as little extra weight as I need to. Now you see that first stage there, it's just a large ring of those spider engines on there. And I ended up copying a whole bunch of these around. But with that done, giving it a test, it actually seems pretty good. Now, of course, it burns up the fuel on the stage really quickly, but that's by design. Because now that this is done, I can end up dropping it. And you see the next stage just starts going. And it means I carry as little extra weight as I need to. So I just keep dropping these stages off after I use them. And you see, I actually got pretty far on this first test. And I had almost no lag at all when doing this. So this definitely felt like the right way to go. But to make it go a little bit further, what I wanted to do is add on one of these bicouplers. Now you see here the bottom stage, I now have two of these. They're clipping into each other a little bit. That shouldn't be too big of a problem. But what I wanted to do is actually double up the stage before it as well. And that'll give me just a little bit more thrust. Now with that done, you see I'm putting down some solar panels. And this so I'm able to charge up the batteries. So I'm able to use the stability control in the air. Once I had that done, you see I'm putting down an antenna like this. And that's just in case I need it. But I didn't really think I was going to need to. Now I also ended up adding on two extra fuel tanks to the top stage. And that's because I just wasn't entirely convinced those three ball tanks were going to work. And I was going to try out the top stage, but I noticed all the fuel tanks were empty. And then I realized that I actually forgot to put in a decoupler, meaning that bottom stage was draining from the top stage. So what I ended up doing was adding in a decoupler between those two stages. And after I did that, I added on one extra fuel tank to the bottom stage because I realized I could probably use it here. And once that was done, you see, detached that top stage just fine. Now it was a little slow and it was actually a little too slow in my opinion because it made this burn painful and actually a little dangerous because I was falling in a little bit too far. So I added on one extra set of spider engines to the top stage here. And you can see now it's burning a lot faster. And with that, I actually managed to get a full orbit here. Now when I was in the air here, I noticed that it said SAS disengaged and I was kind of wondering why it said that. And then I realized I forgot to turn on symmetry mode. So my solar panel was on the wrong side right now and I wasn't charging up the batteries at all. And I actually noticed the batteries are really limited. Only five electric charge isn't a lot at all. Now I ended up spinning it around here to solve that problem, but I noticed a few other problems during the flight. And the first thing I did was add on another fuel tank to the bottom stage because it ended up being able to use it. After that, I added on one extra set of boosters to the top stage to make it a little bit more powerful. I ended up doubling the amount of solar panels to the top stage and I added on a battery pack. Now the battery pack is 100 electric charge, which means I really shouldn't be running out unless something goes really wrong. And with all that done, I'm actually going for the full mission here. So starting out on the launch pad, it's definitely laggy, but it actually does seem to work out. And you can see you're gaining some height. I ended up speeding up time because it was a little painful, but at least it should have enough fuel to get to its final destination. So I was okay with it being a little laggy. And the lagginess actually really started to show here. After I tried to drop this bottom stage, it just froze. And you can see here, I have it on eight times speed. And it took a long time for us to finally calculate everything. And then the bottom stages ended up dropping. Not exactly sure what was up with that. I guess it's just all the engines I had on it. But you see, eventually those stages ended up dropping just fine. And this next stage ended up going for quite a while here. Now, I did run into a small problem because I ended up running out of fuel. I didn't really notice, but fortunately it was at a point in the flight where it wasn't too important. So I ended up continuing my burn after that. And it was at this point in the flight when really nothing too interesting is happening. I'm just trying to build up enough speed to get into orbit here. And it means just continually dropping stages after I use them. And you can see here, I ended up dropping that second to last stage. And now what I have is my last main stage before I have the actual lander. So I was hoping to get fully into orbit with this stage at the very least. And it seemed to mostly be happening. I got out of the atmosphere here. So the goal now is to warp until I got in orbit. And then once I got that orbit, I'd be able to start doing some weird encounters to get out of the Kerbin system. Now you can see, I ended up getting up to that apoapsis and I started to continue the burn. Now, it's not as efficient to do it this way. It's technically most efficient to burn away from Kerbin and not make an orbit. But the advantage of making the orbit is that I can time things a little bit better. And that's going to be important here. Now I ended up running out of fuel in that bottom stage just before I had an orbit. So I ended up having to use the lander a little early, but it should be fine. And once I had that, I wanted to try to burn until I got an encounter with the moon. Now the plan here is to use the moon to slingshot me away from Kerbin. And I've never tried this before, but it seemed like it could be fun. So I wanted to give it a shot here. Now I ended up quite luckily just happening to get an encounter with moon pretty easily here. And you can see once I got that like that, I ended up using another maneuver node to just tweak it a little bit. And I wanted it to fling me back. So I kill a bunch of my speed relative to the sun. So I'd be able to intercept Eve. And eventually here you see, I got the encounter I was looking for. So I just started to do the burn and I was being pretty careful with this because small movements were actually changing this quite a bit, but I ended up getting it roughly where I wanted it to go. And after that, warped away from Kerbin and started to warp towards the moon. Now I just continue to do my warping like this. And I noticed that I'm kind of coming at the moon head on here. I was getting a little worried about that. And if I looked at the trajectory, I was actually going to hit the moon here. And I forgot that it will show you the orbit, even if it's technically not possible. So I need to be a little bit more careful with how I do this. So I reloaded and basically did the same thing as before, but I didn't quite pull it in as close. And I was hoping this would make all the difference. And when I try warping to the moon here, you can see it's better, but I'm still definitely going to run into it here. So I had to be even more careful with this. And this final burn here, you can see, I ended up reloading and I got it to a point where it was looking a lot better. Now I ended up burning a little bit too far and I actually had to correct this a little bit. And you see here, it's going to cost me about
about 100 meters per second to delta V. Now, that's not great, but I'm hoping I can use this larger orbit to really slingshot me in the correct direction. So I ended up facing towards the maneuver node and starting to do my burn like this. Now you can see my periapsis was a little over a thousand meters, which means I shouldn't slam into the moon, but it should be really close. But I figured that's probably fine. As long as I'm not touching, it should be good. But just looking at the big orbital view here, you can see the blue line actually is going through the moon. And that's usually bad because that means you're actually going to hit it, but it may have just been a graphical glitch. So I just continued on like this and now getting closer to it, I'm actually going to increase the brightness. So it's a little easier for you guys to see. And it was not looking great. It was definitely a close scrape, but it was a little too close. And you can see here, I ended up slamming into the moon. So I ended up giving it another shot, but this time I ended up being 4,000 meters away. I figured that'd probably be good. And you can see here, the blue line's actually above the moon right now. So I was pretty confident this was going to work. And I was warping towards the moon. I ended up trying to get some nice artsy shots like this, but I was getting more and more concerned the more I was looking at this. I ended up turning it back into the normal view. And I realized there was actually a mountain ahead of me and things still weren't going so well. And after all that, I still slammed into the moon. Now, I only noticed this in post, but the Kerbal actually managed to survive that somehow. But with all that done, I ended up trying this again, but this time I'm 8,000 meters away. And that definitely should be enough to clear everything. And you see here, it's still a close scrape. You see I'm well over the mountains at this point, I'm like 3,500 meters away. So it's not really a problem at all. And for that, I ended up flying away and I ended up getting my much larger orbit with Kerbin. Now with that done, I wanted to get another encounter at the moon, but this time I really wanted to slingshot me away. And you can see here, it's going to cost me a little over 100 meters per second of delta V, but this one really should fling me out in the correct direction. And with that set up correctly here, I ended up warping towards the maneuver node and starting to do that burn. Now this burn, I intended to be pretty close to the moon, not as close as before, but it has gotten a little greedy. And you see here, I got it into about 30,000 meters. Now again, this shouldn't look as tight as before and it was completely unnecessary, but I thought it'd look on in a video. So there you go. And you see here, as I start warping in a little bit, I ended up getting this really nice shot here. And after that flyby, you can see here I got a moon escape and finally a Kerbin escape. So finally, after all that, you can see here I'm escaping Kerbin. And actually here, my orbit is almost perfectly intersecting Eves. All of that work seems to have paid off because it saved me quite a bit of fuel trying to pull that in. Now with about 200 meters a second of Delta V, see here, I finally get that Eve encounter and it ends up being about 7 million meters. And I ended up just sticking with that for now. And I figured I'd just tune that later. So I ended up doing that burn like this. And after that, I added another maneuver. And this one I'm trying to pull into about 100,000 meters. Now the atmosphere is at 90,000 and I'd really prefer not to slam into that really fast. So ideally I'd hit it just a little bit above. Now it was a little bit too high still. So I ended up warping a little bit closer and pulling it into just above 90,000 meters. Now to do that, I started warping once again and I ended up warping around to the other side and noticing a small problem. It seems like I did some small correction burns here. And after those, you see I'm actually dropping into the atmosphere a bit. And that's kind of what I was trying to avoid because now you see everything starting to heat up and that actually caused the Kerbal to explode. Now, that was definitely not ideal. So I ended up having to load the quick save and I ended up failing once again and the Kerbal just exploded immediately because I wasn't facing in the right direction. So I tried once again and this time I actually got it facing in the right direction. I was going just above 90,000 meters and once I did that burn, you see I finally got captured here. Now once I got captured, I ended up warping around to the other side and I pulled in the orbit just below 90,000 meters. I was hoping to not burn up the Kerbal this time, but it was kind of problematic because while it did enter the atmosphere and nothing bad happened, I was pulling in my orbit such a slight amount. It wasn't really working. And I realized that the way I had the heat shield and the command seat set up, it wasn't really properly protecting the Kerbal at all. So I wanted to make just a few more changes here to get this working. And you see, I removed one set of spider engines because I realized it was a little bit too heavy. After that, I moved the command seat in just a tiny bit. And I also added in a reaction control wheel. That was so that once I was in the air, I'm able to turn around because all of the movements I've done before, I had to do with the engines on just a tiny amount, which means I was wasting a little more fuel than I would like. But with that done, you see here, warped away from Kerbin once again, and finally started to approach Eve. Once I did that, got around to the other side again and got captured. And now we're back up to speed. So I pulled in the orbit to about 85,000 meters. And because of the new heat shield placement and also the new reaction control wheel, I'm able to hold it much more stable in this specific position. And you see it per perfectly protects the Kerbal, so I'm not having any problems. Now everything else is heating up and eventually you see something explode. That was one of the two solar panels. That was actually okay. As long as I had one of them, it was fine. But that done, I ended up getting out of the atmosphere and I killed a considerable amount of my height. So I ended up warping around once again and just trying it out again. Now this basically just became a routine. I just ended up warping around, going around, going to the atmosphere, burning up a little bit, and finally just warping all the way around again until I re-enter the atmosphere. Now I actually ended up burning about 200 meters per second of fuels, all the fuel I had left in my tanks, just to kill a little bit more speed because I realized 
realize that I don't really have a use for it during the descent, and my fuel tanks are probably going to explode off anyway, so I might as well just use it now. But with all that done, you see here, I'm slowly pulling it in more and more, and these last two spins around are actually looking pretty good. Now, once I got my epilapsis down to about 250,000 meters, I was convinced this was probably the last go around, and I was pretty much ready to start falling in. Now, the first part of this is actually no different than before, basically just going to the atmosphere, burning up a little bit, but the difference is I'm not going to be coming out. At some point, I'm going to peak and then start falling back down, and you see that happening right about now. My altitude is starting to fall, and this is where things get very different. In fact, here you can see my periapsis has become zero meters, which means I'm definitely going to fall in. So all that's done, I started falling in just a little bit more, and I ended up checking the orbital view just to make sure everything looked good, but when I tried going into the regular view, I noticed something exploded, and I figured it pretty much had to have been the solar panel since it was the only thing left on the outside, but that's okay because I shouldn't need any power generation at this point, and now is where the arrow line started to form. And this is when I was getting really worried. This was basically the make or breaks. The heat shield couldn't take it, or if something exploded and hit me in the wrong direction, I was instantly going to explode the Kerbal, so I had to be really careful here, but thankfully you can see it ended up surviving, and with that I was going about 500 meters per second, which was pretty much entirely safe. Just as I fall more and more, you see I'm about 200 meters per second now, and that's safe enough for the parachute to deploy. So, see that ends up deploying here, and after that, it's pretty much just smooth sail into the end. So guys, thanks for watching. This is definitely a very challenging video, especially having to do the whole thing over again until I got to Eve was quite annoying, but thankfully it ended up working out just well in the end, and I got exactly what I wanted to happen. So, if you have any more weird rocket ideas, make sure to leave them down below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, until next time.